If you're new to selling print on demand, there may be some things that you are unsure about or things that you didn't even know would be helpful to know. So today I'm gonna to share with you seven things that I have learned over time while building my print on demand business that I wish that I knew before I got started. And before we get into it, one of the number one questions that I get is which print provider do I use and why? And I use Printify and the reason for that is, is because I find that they have the lowest cost for the products that you're purchasing at wholesale. And also they have fantastic customer support as well as processes in place for listing your products. Anytime I have an issue with an order, their support chat is right there and ready to answer questions and they resolve issues very, very quickly. And I feel extremely confident and comfortable just knowing that I have them in my corner helping me run my business. So I am going to provide a link for you down below so you can get set up with them 100% free. I'm also gonna link for you my seven day free Etsy bootcamp. It's going to help you get started with your very own print on demand business and walk you through all of the getting started steps over a seven day period of time. I'm looking forward to your success. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the seven things that I learned that should be helpful for you in starting your print on demand business. Number one, understanding what makes a good print quality. Now I have a Facebook group with about 2000 people on it. And one of the number one things that I see from new sellers in there is that they're having issues with print quality. So some things that you want to keep in mind for this is that you need high resolution designs that you upload to Printify. Now, a lot of Etsy sellers will just use a standard 5,000 by 5,000 pixel template for their designs, and that works for most products on Printify. And Printify also has, when you go to upload your design, the exact minimum dimensions for your templates in order to get a high quality resolution image. So whenever you're in doubt, you can always go directly to Printify and look at the dimensions that they recommend. In addition to that, there are different print providers on the Printify platform and they all have different ratings based on the quality of their prints, shipping times, and the reliability of their stock. And those are all things that you need to take into consideration when selecting a print provider on Printify. Now, I personally opt for Monster Digital as my number one print provider on Printify because to me, they're just the most consistent. And then coming in second for me is Swift POD as a good backup. And then of course, when there are stock issues, um, I have to use other print providers as well, but if I can, I try my best to go with those two. Then next, you also have to be aware that different shirt colors can actually make your prints turn out differently. For example, there is a lot of issues with white color prints on red shirts. So I personally don't even sell red shirts in my store. There are things that you can do to combat that. However, I, I just don't even do that. That's something that you may wanna consider for your very own store. Also, one of the first complaints that I had in my store was with black sweatshirts and white prints and customers not liking that the white print wasn't vibrant enough. So there are definitely some things that you can do in that case. I typically like to choose a more bold white and you can also layer the white inside of Printify. You can layer the designs on top of each other. There's also a color code that you can use that isn't exactly white that you can change in your designs so that it prints better. And I will leave that color code for you down below in the description. Also, it's important to read the fine print on every single product that you're looking to do on Printify because oftentimes they will have notes in the in the product description telling you how to get the best print quality, but people often ignore those notes and they do the things that they don't recommend and then they wonder why their print quality turned out really bad. So when in doubt, always be sure to read everything available to you uh, about the product on Printify 
and you can also reach out to Printify Chat at any time, and they are super helpful. They will answer your questions, and you can also order samples for yourself to make sure that you're happy with the quality. Number two, make sure that you're not just going after and modeling best sellers on Etsy. You actually have to make sure that there is a gap in the marketplace for you so that when you type in the search term, you're not just in a sea of other people that have tons and tons of options. If someone searches that your listing is going to be able to stand out to them because your design is unique, the colors that you have chosen are different from the spread of choices that they already have available to them, and it's something that customers cannot get anywhere else. It is a step that takes a little extra time doing that research. However, it is extremely necessary to maximize your time, your efforts, and even your money in listing on Etsy. Number three, when I first got started on Etsy, I was truly just treating it like a hobby. I thought I was treating it like a business, but nope, I was treating it like a hobby. I was just adding a few listings here and there and kind of just coasting along, but I recommend if you want to make a decent amount of money with print on demand that you set out to treat it like a business, you make a schedule for yourself, and you commit to the number of listings that you want to get done every single day, and you show up to your business every single day, day in and day out, just as if it were a job, and you commit to getting that work done. Otherwise, if it's just a hobby, then it's gonna pay you like a hobby, and you're probably not going to earn very very much. Number three, I would recommend just doing one product template to start. Now, when I first started, I was doing uh, t-shirts, mugs, sweatshirts, right? I was doing several different types of products and I was kind of like haphazardly, you know, doing a t-shirt here, a sweatshirt there, a mug there. Um, but it's so much more efficient if you literally just pick one product template. So for example, a t-shirt template or a tote bag template, and you pick that one product and it's gonna make it more efficient for you to master that one product, create a template that you are in the flow with and can design for and crank out over and over and over again. And that repetition is how you get good at a skill. And then before you know it, you will be a master at selling tote bags or mugs or sweatshirts. And in addition to having just one product template, I would also have one design template sort of create a theme. I did a full video on how to crank out a thousand listings in the most efficient and fastest way. And I showed how to create a design template. So you have a particular set of words and phrases that you can switch out. So it allows you to create a cohesive feel in your store and it also allows you to power through your listings. And of course, when you're doing that, you want to make sure that it is a design layouts and colors and fonts that are proven to work and that will sell but they also need to be unique to you. Number six, this goes along with being organized and treating it like a business, and that is I would work in time blocks and batches. So I would personally set aside a time, say in the morning, to do all of my research and write down all of my titles, tags, and all of the keywords that I want to use. And then I would go through uh, at a separate time block and then I would make all of the designs. I would power through the design templates. And then I would set aside another time block to get all of those loaded up to Printify and published to Etsy. So working in time blocks and uh, working in batches, sectioning off parts of your business so that you can truly get in what I like to call the flow state. Because when you are switching tasks, it's very easy to just feel like you're all over the place doing things haphazardly and it doesn't go very efficiently, right? When you're doing the same thing repetitively over and over and over again, it starts to flow, it starts to become easy and you could like power through a full hour and not even realize how much work that you were able to get done. 
And last but not least, number seven, I would fully utilize my Etsy referral link to get those free listing credits. A lot of Etsy sellers don't know that they can open their shop through another Etsy seller's referral link and get 40 free listings to get their store started. And then you can get your very own Etsy referral link and share it with others. When someone else uses your link to open their shop, they're going to get 40 free listings and you're also going to get 40 free listings. So if you continue to refer people to sell on Etsy through your link, you're going to have so many free Etsy listing credits that you'll never have to pay for another Etsy listing in your life. You can do like I do and share your journey on YouTube. You can share it on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, wherever you would like. You can just share it with people that you know in your everyday life. Because who doesn't want to open up an Etsy shop in this day and age, right? So you might as well take advantage of that because I personally have so many free listing credits that I will never ever be able to use them all. So now I just share uh, the referral link of you know my students that are working with me in my Facebook group and many of them have gotten so many free listings that they are not concerned about how much they list right those 20 cents are not relevant to them and so they can just power through without stressing over the financial part so I hope this video has been super beneficial for you and that you learned a thing or two that will help you in getting started with your print on demand business. If you have any questions, go ahead and feel free to leave those down below for me. Also, I always love to hear what your favorite takeaway is from the videos, so be sure to comment that as well. And if you haven't signed up for my bootcamp, I would love to have you as a part of our community. All of my best resources are always linked for you down below. So make it an amazing day and I will see you in the next video.